At dawn on Thursday morning, Frederick John Harris was executed in Pretoria for the murder of Mrs. Ethel Reese, 78, in the Johannesburg station bomb explosion. But that is not the end. No final curtain was drawn with the execution of John Harris. His young widow lives on. So does his infant son. Now, in her own statement to the Sunday Times, 26-year-old Anne Harris speaks of her last hours with her husband and of her life with him. I learned that our plea for mercy had failed and that John was to die when I went to visit him on Monday afternoon. I couldn't speak. John was very worried about me and he had by then, of course, been told that he was to die on Thursday. Could we really say that we were not involved with the bomb at the station? And what would I have done if it had been me and not John left alone outside with the rest of our group either detained or gone? John now saw himself as standing alone. All the other people he had been involved with were in jail or had fled. I think he felt in this position that he could not remain silent. On the 24th of July 1964, having placed the bomb on the whites only platform at Johannesburg Station, in order to avoid loss of life and injury to commuters, John Harris made three warning phone calls from the Jeppy Street post office. In spite of his warnings, no action was taken by the authorities to trace the suitcase or to clear the concourse of the Russia crowd. At 4.33 p.m. precisely, it exploded with hideous effect under the whites only bench in the shelter at the top of the stairs leading to platforms five and six. At least 23 commuters were badly injured. They included a 12-year-old, Glynis, who was permanently disfigured, and her 77-year-old grandmother, who died of her injuries six weeks later. And then Ernie got a phone call from John Harris saying, please come and see me. He'd been badly beaten up by then. His jaw had been broken, it had been wired up. His balls were black because of torture. And he said to Ernie, please, Ernie, don't let them hang me. On Wednesday morning, the day before the execution, I saw John for 90 minutes. I was with him again for two hours in the afternoon. I took our son David just to see him. He played happily with the screen and crawled around on the prison floor. The saddest thing about John Harris and the station bomb is that in any other time and in most other places, John would probably have been found guilty of manslaughter. But not so John in July 1964. He was never going to beat the rope. They wanted him, you see, as a prize exhibit to beat into submission anyone opposing the great apartheid dream. They wanted John dead. I know, without a doubt, that my husband did not mean to kill or injure anyone by his action at Johannesburg Station on July 24. John Harris, the final spear carrier of the African resistance movement, died alone. The rest of us, I suppose, were lucky in that we survived. And we vigiled the night he was executed, and it was just terrible to leave Johannesburg. As John's father said, that we all left Johannesburg while he was alive in order to attend his funeral next day. And, and we vigiled with Father McGuinness that night. And then in the morning, he said a prayer and he went off to John's execution. Then the executioner came and John shook hands with him and the other warders and last of all with me. And then he went to his death singing, we shall overcome. And he came back and he said, well, your friend died very well, very well indeed, over breakfast, singing, we shall overcome. It was horrible. You know, we, we were all hated the death penalty as it was. But to have your friend executed was pretty awful. We have also received threatening and abusive calls. And the last call before John died, it came through late on Wednesday night. 
It is from an anonymous caller who told Adeline Hain, I hope you hang with Harris. Uh, the first we had in the morning was from another anonymous caller who said to her, you are next on the list. But these are things I shall forget. There is so very much I shall remember. They refused to give the ashes to my sister or his family, so that all those years my sister didn't know where he'd been buried, or if he'd been buried at all, or if his ashes had been discarded. We didn't know that. And eventually I found a gardener and I asked him, and so there it was in the ground. And so the stone, when I found it, just said, John Harris and the date of his death. And I, I thought the family would want to take up the ashes and make a memorial, but they didn't want to. Their concern was just his final request. That one day, in a new South Africa, on his memorial stone would be written, John Harris, true patriot.